Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of the PowerCast. So we have Jenna Rodriguez and she has an amazing story. I'm really excited to have her here today. She is a business strategist and she has gone from, she's been in business for 11 years. Um, she's gone from being homeless to, and being over um, 700K in debt and bankrupt to now generating over 1.2 million in her business and um, really worked on her mindset and obviously strategy as well to be able to create success in, in her business and her life. So thanks for being here today. Oh, you're welcome. You reminded me of my story. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, that was me? <laughs> that was me. Oh, yeah. yeah. So can you talk sure. a bit about like, yeah, where, where were you at before you started business? Were, yeah. You know, 11 years ago or however long ago that was. Can you tell us a bit about your story? Yeah, for sure. So um, the, the, the kind of journey I've been on, I mean, in my, you know, my 20s, I was clearly trying to find myself and find my footing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and I found myself, you know, moving from, I'm in, I'm in the U S and I moved from, um, Ohio to California, to Atlanta, to, to Chicago, all these different places. And I'm originally from Houston, Texas, where I am now. Okay. And, um, and in that kind of, I mean, I was broke, I was struggling financially. I was just trying to figure things out for myself. I didn't really, I really was kind of on my own and had to, had to kind of lean on myself to do mm -hmm. things. Um, and, and so anyway, I found myself couch hopping for about six months, um, uh, maybe four or five. I, I, it was something like that. It felt like a long time, um, maybe five months. And, uh, and it just was a time where I was very unstable and very like, what am I doing? How, how, what, what's going to work and, you know, and trying to find my way. So, um, and then I got into, uh, I finally found a job and got my own place and all those fun things and got, and my motto for quite a while was stability. I was like, I need mm. some stability, right? Yeah. Um, and so I found myself moving into a career as a controller. Uh, it, it, I'm very good at math and numbers, and then I'm also an artist um, mm. and creative, and, and I love marketing because I find that to be creative too. And, uh, and so what came easy to me though, as a job was like, I can do numbers all day long. Just give me the numbers. I'll do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself falling into that career and I spent about eight years. I think it was about eight years as a controller. And then I was a consultant and I moved up the ranks and I was cl close to about $75,000 a year in the corporate world, which wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. Um, and I then realized, I mean, I, you know, after eight years and going, okay, I'm stable. <laughs> I'm good now. Um, and I got married and, uh, you know, in that stability, I found my partner and my husband and, uh, and then we had a child, I had a stepdaughter and then we had a child together. And so I started just realizing about 30 years old, um, that I wanted more. I wanted to do my own thing. And I always had the entrepreneurial spirit, but I didn't have entrepreneurial mentors or parents or, you know, they just, they, they did their thing. Um, and my dad was a computer programmer in corporate America and mom was a housewife and an artist. Therefore I am both. <laughs> but, um, the, the interesting part is, is sometimes for, at least for me and my story, I came into this realization that I was living someone else's definition of my worth mm. uh, in corporate America. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like I had proven myself. I had moved up the ranks. I was on my way to manager, all those things. And yet it was like, it's not enough. I want more. I want more freedom. Mm. Um, and so I stumbled upon a website that had a boutique for sale. And I was like, because my history is in fashion design, makeup artistry, um, controller, uh, marketing, those kind of things, like all over the say, board. Your eyes look great. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yes, people are like, your makeup's so great. I'm like, yeah, makeup artist. <laughs> so um, I self-taught from like the age of like 13. So, awesome. um, and, and so this storefront, this women's boutique, and it brought makeup. It had a makeup franchise with it. It had fashion, it, you know, and I was like, oh, this will be great. Wow. What, what if I could do this? What if? Mm. And I went, and so it was just an idea. It was just literally a spark of an idea. And, uh, and then I, I took what, you know, it's kind of like, this is what life's about as you follow the breadcrumbs. And so I, I saw the website, I saw the ad, I had a meeting with the person and I was like, 
huh, maybe I could do this. And then I said, okay, well, if I'm going to do it, I have to get an SBA loan because I can't, I don't have $200,000 sitting around. <laughs> and, um, and so I qualified for that. I mean, I like took the steps and then it becomes like real. Mm -hmm. And I, I came up to the decision called, am I going to do this? Am I going to leave the safety of corporate America, but I'm not fulfilled mm -hmm. and I'm not, I'm not feeling like I'm moving into my potential uh, mm -hmm. or am I going to jump out there and take the leap of faith and, and try this on? And I was excited. I was like, wow, I could see multiple locations and I, you know, I could see the potential and see the, the vision. Mm -hmm. And so sure enough, I walked into my boss and told him I was leaving and I bought that store. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was so exciting and so like, wow, what a brave moment. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then the reality set in about a year later and I had made $300,000 in sales now paying people, paying inventory, um, and trying to sustain my own personal income. Mm -hmm. And it actually was way harder than expected and capital ran out. So if you're going to buy a storefront, you better have capital. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so that was the lesson, right? Yeah. I, it's like I knew all these things, but it's like until you're in the, the trenches, sometimes you don't know what, to, what you're going to do about it. Yeah. So one year later, I mean, one year, it's not very long, but it was one year later, I made 300 and I was 700,000 in debt with wow. everything. And I was like, I'm bleeding cash. I'm two months behind on rent. Like it's not happening. Like I'm struggling. And the rent, I even asked the landlord, I said, Hey, can I, go to a smaller space and he said no and I'm like well you're putting me in a pickle because yeah. I, I don't know what else to do you know and mm. um, so it was it was tough and I uh, ended up sitting in front of a bankruptcy attorney going what are my options mm. um, like do I have to do this like can mm. I not do this yeah. and she was just very honest with me and let me choose and um, and I and the, the thing that came up for me in that meeting was she said look I don't, you know, it's not like I am a bankruptcy attorney, but it's not like I'm trying to make everybody go bankrupt. You know, it's like, you've got to decide what's important. Mm. And, uh, and she said, so what's most important to you? Do you want to keep it going and try to make it work? Or do you want to let it go and, and do something else? And, and I said, the most important thing for me right now is my two year old, my nine year old, my sanity and my husband and my house. Like, I don't want to lose that. Yeah. Like right now that's all that's important to me. I can start over. Yeah. You know, I can start a new business or whatever. Mm. Um, I couldn't even see what that was. <laughs> I was just like, mm. that's all. I'm like stressed to the hilt. And yeah. um, she said, well, then this is your options, you know. And um, I had $10,000 left to my name between the, the business account, the personal account, the savings, yeah. everything. And I knew if I spent it, you know, um, it would, you know, it's like I better be strategic about this as best as I could. Yeah. So sure enough, I filed personal bankruptcy and, um, and then I woke up the next day and I think this is what brave is all about is I, I got clear. I needed to go in massive action quickly. I had a mortgage coming, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mortgage payment coming. And, um, and I just knew, I just knew I was like, I do not want to work for someone else. Mm -hmm. Like, so what am I going to do? Like, what can I do that can bring some money in um, and I, I go figure this out, right? How do I work, stay working for myself yeah. as an accountant controller? I knew, uh, <laughs> it's a better tax better benefit to work for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, because you can write things off. Um, yeah. I knew that, you know, it's like, um, I had more potential, you know, I had, I knew certain things for sure. And yeah. I just had to find the guts to do it for myself. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I woke up and I said, all right, I'm, I even tucked my tail and called my ex boss and said, do you have it? I said, I don't want to be in, I don't want to be employed. I said, mm -hmm. but do you have any contracts that I could just pick up, you know, doing what I used to do? Mm. And he said, yes, actually <laughs> he gave me two contracts. And so that's my story of just really turning myself into the business owner that I am for the last 12 years, mm. um, 11, 12 years, one year being the store. And, uh, and now of course I've gone through many iterations. I've gone through being a partner with my husband and a web company web and design company. Uh, and then we departnered um, the business in 2013 and I took over kind of the business as it was and reinvented it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then now I've rebranded to Brave Masters as of last year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I just really love supporting entrepreneurs and making sense of how to make six figures in their business, how to um, you know, kind of break through the noise and simplify and look at it from, you know, a, a creative mind, but also look at it from the strategic bottom line mind. 
Mm. And, uh, and so now I get to do even more of what I love um, mm. as a business strategist, as a business coach, and, uh, and just really helping people. I believe entrepreneurship is like the way to go if you really want to step into your fullest potential. Yes. And it's, one, it's not the easy way and it's the brave way is what I always say. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. here we are, right? Awesome. And what yeah. do you think, especially having the background that you said you have with numbers and things like that, how do you think you allowed yourself or what was going through your head at the time to get into 700,000 worth of debt? Like how did it get to that stage, do you think? Yeah, so I know, right? I was like, <laughs> trust me, I went through a little bit of like shame about it and it was like, <laughs> no better. Well, so that's not gonna serve us in the long run. Yeah. Um, so part of it is $200,000 was the loan, like just to buy the store. So I knew I was going to have like a long-term loan with that. Yeah. Um, and then the lease was e easily like w a value of what I would owe, mm -hmm. um, about 300, 350, I think if I, I don't remember all the d details yeah, yeah. But that plus the, plus the loan, plus the, uh, all the credit cards are maxed out. Mm. Um, I had a $40,000 balance on one of them. I had lines of credit trying to keep up with the inventory, mm. right? You have to buy inventory before it sells, sells mm. clearly. Um, yeah. Keeping up with the employee costs and, and all of that. And my rent was 6,000 a month, which was pretty high, you know, wow, for yeah. what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, and so when you add it all up, I mean, I even, it was, cause I wasn't, it's like on a management level, you don't necessarily look at, um, you don't, on a daily, monthly basis, you don't necessarily look at the lease and the, the, the mm -hmm. SBA loan, you know, that's part of your balance sheet. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but when you get to the end of the day and you have to turn it all into the bankruptcy attorney and I was like, yeah, wow. Right. Yeah. Like, wow. So this is what I have to handle. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to leave the business, this is what I have to handle. And so of yeah. course it's a lot. And, um, and, and I'm sure some businesses, when they start, they're millions of dollars in debt, you know I mean? Meaning they're investing a lot and maybe they don't get that, uh, out mm -hmm. of the business immediately. So yeah. the fact that I couldn't, and I was, we were hitting the recession time also, and mm -hmm. I was one of like nine stores to close that year, okay. like in my, in my little square. Yeah. Um, uh, not a good thing for shopping. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so there was just a lot of, it was like a perfect storm. Yeah. And I also just didn't know what I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I think that's what business owners uh, should admit to themselves. It's like, it's okay that you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Uh, I did reach out to as many like, ad, you know, people that I could call on. I did coaching and stuff wasn't as prevalent back then, by, yeah. by the way. It wasn't yeah. as like in your face. Totally. And it would have been really powerful to have somebody that knew a little bit more than me, mm. you know, to call on. Um, totally. That's what I want to be for other people is I've been there, done it. And yeah. so let's, you know, let's figure totally. this out. Totally. And yeah. I like what you brought up as well. Like that question that I asked and you said it straight away, it's not coming from a place of like, we shouldn't hold on to shame or guilt or like I should know better. Cause like you said, that's not helpful, but it's coming from a place of like, Oh, okay, this happened and I'm going to learn from that now. So it doesn't happen again. And like you said, so I can help more people not have to go through that as well. And actually I was just talking to someone this morning and I've helped a lot of people and spoken to a lot of people about this where they have their head kind of up in the clouds and they have no idea how much they have owing or they feel yeah. like, Oh, I'm making good money. So I should be able to spend it but they are right. not taking into account their debt or they might've made a lot of money that week, but then they've got a lot more expenses the next week. So yeah. I guess with all of that in mind, like what did you learn around money, money mindset? Um, yeah. What would you say to someone that maybe does have a lot of debt or their heads up in the clouds and they're not paying attention to the numbers? So for me, um, I don't believe that you have to have the right relationship with debt and money. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and this has been, let me just be honest here. I always am, but it's like, it's been a process to, because I came from my, my upbringing, I made money, uh, conversations around lack and scarcity. And I, I, you know, at one point we were on food stamps. I mean, so, uh, I've had to create my mindset around money, mm -hmm. uh, and I've had to really take ownership of the relationship that I created around it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that debt, especially in a business, you're going to have some debt. You're going to invest. You're going to, you know, I mean, now there's, there are models of business. Clearly I'm now in a model that has way less overhead, yes. way less. And you know, you can do a lot of guerrilla marketing and focus in on revenue versus, you know, um, 
a, a storefront or an office building, right? Um, and so when you buy building and things like that and invest in something that's physical mm -hmm. uh, or it's inventory or something like that, you're going to have, you're going to have some debt and investment and liabilities. Mm -hmm. And so if you can think of it as liabilities on your balance sheet, and I think that's part of the challenge is most people don't understand the balance sheet. Mm -hmm. That's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. um, even your own personal balance sheet. Mm -hmm. um, people understand a P&L and a profit and loss. You know, it's like, it's very simple. Revenue less expenses equals what you got left, right? Um, and yet the balance sheet is really where you, um, is where is kind of the relationship you want to start to build. Mm -hmm. And, and so I have debt now and I have liabilities is what you want to call them. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and yet I still have a positive net equity mm -hmm. because I'm making more revenue and I have a profit every year. And yeah. so that profit gets pushed back into the business or what have you. And so, and it doesn't mean that you might not have a loss another year, but it's like it kind of, you just have to keep an eye on your balance sheet. And so mindset wise, I think it's having a healthy relationship to what debt really means. And for me, it means a liability. Mm -hmm. And if I can put my, minimize it, but at the same time, don't run from it. Don't try, it's like, I'm not, my goal is not to be debt free. Yeah. Like, yes, there are going to be times when I want to pay things off or I pay things down because it's costing me money. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. You know, a credit card is going to cost you money uh, in the end. Yeah. And it, it depends what the debt's from. If you're just yeah. wrapping up your credit card with designer clothes and eating out all the time and, Correct. you know, like it depends what, where it's from yeah. and what's the purpose behind it. <laughs> yeah. And it, so it's like, if you're invest, if you're investing in yourself, like clearly people invest quite a bit with me as a business owner, uh, I'm a business coach and a business owner. Um, and it's all in per on purpose to make more money. Yeah. Like it's a, there hasn't, if you do the action and you take, do the work, then there's yeah. an ROI. Yeah. Um, and, and so I'd rather do, I, and I do, I have like two coaches. So I'd rather invest in that learning. And, uh, cause I know what I, when I didn't have one, I clearly didn't know what to do about things right when in the store. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I just think it's interesting how people will invest in a edge, like college or education <laughs> when I'm like, Okay. And how, what is the ROI, you know, and I'm not saying if you're a doctor, you know, it's like, um, but yeah. just like general degrees. I, and I, I got educated. Mm -hmm. However, um, I also paid for the loan and I also paid for, you know, I had to pay for it myself. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's like, but you won't invest in like business strategy and coach that's actually more specific to your situation mm -hmm. than just going and getting a degree or class or, what have you. Uh, yeah. And don't get me wrong. I'm not downing doubt, you know, like putting that down. I mean, there, it has its place, but I just, it's interesting the conversations that people have about like, Oh, you, that's too much. And I'm like, but you would spend that on a, on a semester at a college. Yeah. You know? And I, yet, I know people not, that have done four years at university to get a business or marketing degree or whatever. And they don't know the first thing about business because yes. you're reading from textbooks that are years old, business and marketing is changing like that. Like, yeah. <laughs> and what's appropriate for me in my business in my strategy and mm -hmm. my approach to the market, because, um, and I've had so much experience being a, a controller, uh, outsource controller for a consultant, meaning I was working in all types of industries. Mm. And then I have my own industries that I've, I've tapped into with my own experience. Mm. And, um, and so it's not necessarily the widget that you sell, but it is about knowing enough about the balance sheet, about the revenue and um, expense, you know, conversation and also about the marketing sales and um, you know, brand for that matter, brand clarity. Yeah. Um, and so you know, knowing who you are and knowing what your message is so that people can hear you, you know? And so, yeah, I a hundred percent believe that, you know, if you're in business right now, it's imperative that you invest in what you don't know or what you, or in, in having people that support you from a place of your blind spots. Yes. Um, and, uh, and so the faster you can do that, I think you can accelerate your results. So yeah. that's what I've done. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So what are the key differences that you see from going from like six figures to like over seven figures? Like where was your mindset and life and business at, you know, back then and where, where's it at now? What do you see are the key differences? Yeah. So, um, so just to be clear, cause I never, I never want this to be, um, uh, misconstrued my I've generated over 1.3 million over the last few like few years uh, and so 
I'm not in an annual million. Okay, um, I'm okay. on my way. I'm yeah. multi six figures, and there is a mindset difference regardless. Okay, um, so then so, from I guess from the six figure to the multi six figure mindset. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, and more like five figures. <laughs> yeah. I was hanging out at five figures for about five years. That okay, was wow. the thing, even to shift to. Um, the six figure mark, which I believe a lot of people are even, that's probably the majority of what's happening out there, um, is at least what I find is most people can't even get to that threshold. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it takes a whole nother mindset to get the multi six figures. And then I'm on my way to, you know, the seven, yeah. um, is, uh, the thing is, so even from getting from five figures to six figures, one, five figures is a lot of like, do it yourself, head down you know, hustle, hustle, right? Like you've got to do a lot because you got, you may, may not have the um, financial means to invest in a lot of team or what have you. Mm -hmm. However, um, as you get inch up closer to that six figure mark, you've got to have a mindset of higher help. Um, and, uh, and so it took me a while to get there. Um, I'm like, Oh, I can save money if I just do it myself. I can just save money if I do it myself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then that get, caps you out. We only have so much time in our lives. Yeah. Um, and 100% of us, 24 hours. So, um, so part of the mindset shift for me was number one, being willing to get uncomfortable at, uh, and brave faster is what I'll call it. So mm -hmm. I, when I say brave faster or, you know, like step into my brave more accelerated is that I'm going to, I'm willing to like take risk and get uncomfortable and like face any fears that I have for the sake of like growing my business. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the, the one primary thing that I did, um, back in 2013 and I made the decision in 12 and I'm like, okay, I've been hanging out under, under six figures for five years. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of it. I'm like, what am I going to do? And I knew I needed to get visible and start speaking out, speaking publicly. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't even have me on this if I hadn't <laughs> started saying yes to that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, you know, even podcasts were a little scary. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I committed to getting highly visible. That's the mm -hmm. point. Yeah. I was a networking junkie. I was networking, 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 yeah. and it wasn't producing the six figures like I wanted. Doesn't mean it can't. I'm not. I'm not a generalist yeah. here. Yeah. But what I saw is I I had to leverage my time. So leverage comes from speaking to one to many, right? Yeah. Um, hiring help. Yeah. Um, and I started small. I started with like five hours a month with a VA, you know, virtual mm -hmm. assistant. Yeah. You know, you don't have to like jump in and hire an employee yeah. um, full time, you know, things like that. And I saw where I was holding myself back because of my fears, because of where I was uncomfortable. And that's the thing you got to get over quicker, yeah. right? If you really want to scale up. Yeah. And, and so I recommend people, especially if they're in that, you know, under six figure mark, mm -hmm. if you're not speaking and getting visible and putting yourself out here, you know, mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. uh, you're just going to, I believe you're going to have a harder time, you know, getting to the traction that you want to get. You just mesh in with everyone else online. Like, you know, yeah, you blend in. sitting yeah. on their laptop complaining about other coaches. <laughs> You're like, yeah, so let's judge them for getting visible. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I got it, you know, but it's like, you got to just respect them for showing up, you know, mm -hmm. like, hey, they're showing up, I'm hiding out, whatever yes. that is. And that was me. Yeah. Um, and so I knew I had to get speaking, get out there and start speaking. So I actually, what's funny is now that five years later, I've really kind of honed in on how that, how to monetize that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm excited to say I launched a, a course that's all about getting visible and mm -hmm. getting clear on what your message is. And then, you know, it's called the brave speaker. So, mm -hmm. um, being able to get out there and, and share your message, um, yeah. in a leveraged way. So yeah. that was one of the mindset shifts for me is that, okay, if I'm going to, if I'm going to make strides in my business, I'm going to play bigger. I got to stop playing small. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I think that's part of the shift that people have to make and they're going to have to force themselves into it if, and, and get support if possible. Right. Um, and then when you get to multi six figures, then it's really about how do you scale up and how do you leverage your time and, and start to, yeah. um, really start to value yourself and your time at a whole different level. Yeah. Like you have got to step into your worth. Yeah. And I've got 20 plus years experience. So yeah, my hour is worth way more now <laughs> than, you know, just, you know, just everyday uh, activities. Yeah. So um, I think that's the shift that people have to make and you have to really start to 
um, what's the word? We were even talking about someone kind of like creating sacred space on our calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've got to create that value, not only in the marketplace, we have to yeah. show up as the value that we are. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, we have to be grounded in it. We, if we don't perceive it ourselves, nobody else will. Totally. Um, they feel so that, that, that energy and, and then it comes across in your words, yeah. how you talk, how you show up, everything. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's the shift. And, and then the million dollar mark, number one, you got to believe you're worth it still. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm on my way. I, I will let you know when I hit the, hit that milestone. Yeah. Um, and that'll be a whole another exciting conversation, but it's, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm doing things differently. I'm, you know, and that's the other part. I think you've got to be willing to do things different that, than before mm -hmm. in order to have a new result. And so yeah. I'm in a new season of my business and moving it to that mark. Um, I'm investing in a different way. I'm, you know, and I am going more online so I can access more people, but I have a fundamental foundation built mm. and cash flow built that allows me to invest online at a different rate. Yeah. Um, and I think people like to do it the other way. They're like, no, I'll just hide out behind the computer and you know, my one to 2% conversion online will be enough. And I'm like, yeah. it's just going to take a longer time. So yeah. True. I always say, if you're not making, if you're struggling to make cash, then let's get you out there and just get belly to belly with people yeah. and you know, show up, speak, network, things like that. Um, get some ground, the basis of your business handled, you know, found uh, cash flow wise. Yeah. And then you can start to invest in, in the other things because you're going to have to spend money to, to start to scale up in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And when you said that you started to get visible and getting speaking gigs and things like that, what was it that pushed you to go, oh, okay, I actually feel like I can do that? Like what was that <laughs> mindset shift or the support you had or whatever, what happened around that time to actually go, yeah, I'm going to do this yeah. now? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, I definitely had a coach by then. Um, and she, I, it was like the, I hired her like, I think it was like a year and a half, two years before I like finally, she was waiting on me. She's like, when are you going to make this? When are you going to get started? All yeah. right. So she was my cheerleader for it. Um, and I knew I, I was dealing with a lot of the mindset around it. Um, so I was struggling to, you know, it's like, well, you know, what am, what am I going to talk about? What am I, you know, what are people going to want to hear? They're not going to hear when I, they don't care. Right. Like, you know, so it was all about me. Um, and of course my fear of what people are going to think when I stand up there and all those uncomfortables. But, uh, when I saw like, I, there's moments in my life where I'm just like, I'm watching everyone else get it. And then there's a point where I'm like, why not me? Like, why not me? Yeah. So like, you just got to get over it, Jenna. You know, like I have to do a lot of self-talk. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I had the coach, she was supporting me. She knew, you know, you know, it's like, and, um, she would just cheerlead me on. So number yeah. one, um, and she, and then there was a decision. So to be brave, there's three things I always say, you have to make the decision. Mm. Otherwise you're sitting on the fence about it mm. and it, it can hurt <laughs> the fence. Um, Thank you. and then two, you have to commit and commit and commit, like commit, commit, commit. Uh, and three, you're going to take massive action. Mm -hmm. So, and if you never make the decision to speak or get visible or do whatever it is you're trying to decide to do and mm -hmm. give it a shot, mm -hmm. then you'll never commit or take action on it. Mm -hmm. So it starts first with, and I, and so I remember in 2012 coming into the next year, mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I'm going to speak. That was the decision. Mm -hmm. Now I got, it's like, yes, say yes. And then you figure it out. Mm -hmm. That's the, that was the mindset. And it always is my mindset. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it just takes me a little longer to get to things, but I have gotten so much more um, confident in myself, confident in, in that if I say yes and it doesn't work, it's not the end of the world. If I say yes and it works, yeah. right. And I figure it out, then guess what? I just learned something else, right. About me and about myself, uh, you know, my, my business, Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I had to shift, I had to get to the decision. You've got to just make a decision. And then I know part of the hesitation to make a decision is that, are you going to commit? Mm -hmm. Commitment is our inside of us. It's not outside of us. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, I believe that kind of the universe comes to you and things align if you make a decision and start moving in that direction. Yeah. And, um, and sure enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Well, you get so, the results. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or you, I mean, sitting on the fence and confusion and doubt and all that, like it literally holds, it, it keeps it at bay, you know, yeah. the results that you want. Um, yeah. So even if you make the decision and it doesn't work, at least you're in motion. Um, mm -hmm. And I always say, you know, business and life in general is like an experiment. It's like a, it's like a science lab. Mm -hmm. So put, put a conclusion together, you know, a hypothesis and yeah. then just take action, put the things together in the, you know, test tubes. And if it works great, and if not change the formula, yeah, but that's cool. I, that's what I see people hold back on is they just don't even get started. Yeah. And, well, and if it's yeah. like, well, if it doesn't work and it's like, well, it's not working doing nothing. Right. So yeah, exactly. it's like, you may as well try and like, you know, from what you're talking about as well and what I believe, if you try and it doesn't work, it's not a failure. You are not, no. you yeah. you haven't been rejected. It's not that you're not good enough or anything like that. It's that you tried something and maybe it wasn't the right time or the right fit, or you learn right. the lessons you reflect and you learn from it and you grow and you do the next thing. Yeah. One of the biggest things that the store taught me is I actually didn't realize how much I wanted freedom of location. Mm, yeah. store doesn't provide that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I was like, I left that and going, I actually don't want that. Yeah. I and didn't want it to end that way. It didn't work. That's right. Yeah. I, so it was probably subconscious going, I really wish I didn't have to come here every day. Exactly. You know, so notice, I, here's the thing. I take full responsibility, personal responsibility for the fact it didn't work. Yeah. Um, and I think it is a lot of times the, the thoughts, the subconscious things going on, Okay. that are leading to the result called this ends, you exactly. know, like the ending. Um, I think it happens in relationships. I think it happens yep. in business and in jobs. I mean, it's so funny. I see people go uh, and they're working. Some of them work with me while they have a day job and they're getting their business all off the ground. And like, mm -hmm. I want to quit my day job. And then yep. they get fired. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you asked for this. <laughs> exactly. asked for it. Now yeah. it's time to swim, right? Jump in yeah. the deep end and swim. And I'm your life jacket. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm like, you know, it's, it's kind of like, don't blame the boss. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Anyway, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. And what would you say that like the obstacles you've overcome, the success that you've had, the lifestyle you've created, the business you've created, like all of the, your whole story, basically, yeah. how would you say that that has impacted or, um, I guess taught what's it taught your, your kids and your family? Yeah. Well, um, I'm sure the results of my teaching will show up later. <laughs> there, um, you know, my oldest, my stepdaughter's 21 now and my youngest is 13 going on 14. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so one of the things that, you know, I think number one, I, I made a decision. Um, you know, I was, she was the youngest was two when I started being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she didn't, she, she at five, she thinks I, I was working in my home and she wrote on her piece of paper at school. She's like, my mom's a housewife. And not that there's anything wrong with it, but it was like, not really, yeah. but you know, cause I, she doesn't know what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. Um, now she gets it. Now she knows that I'm like building this business and I'm very honest about if she money, uh, everything, like what I'm doing. And like, if she has a question, I answer it. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I think, what I, what I'm praying that I'm teaching them is that anything is possible. If you, if you're brave and you choose it and you make decisions and, and be responsible for your decisions and your experiences, like you get to create your life. Mm -hmm. Um, funny enough, my daughter and I, and I learned this from my, my mindset mentor, um, and I've been with her for like eight years, you know, mm -hmm. just like in, in a practice of, of mindset. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so my daughter's old enough now and she's actually gone into some kind of emotional challenges. I mean, welcome to, you know, junior high school, um, yeah. but, but it's like, I said, you know, I said, our feelings start with our thoughts. Mm. <laughs> Like, you, you, you know, it's like you have a feeling because you got, you were thinking about it. And so let's, let's start to pay attention to our thoughts and let's create how you want it ahead of time. Yeah. Um, and so I've been writing down, and this is what I, my, my mentor taught us is creation statements, which are basically intention statements, you know, and, um, and writing those down intentionally every day. And so her and I actually do that together now. And yeah. she's a fabulous manifester. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> she's like, 
I, the next day I'm like, well, how much of that came true for you? How much did you experience all that? And she's like, all of it. Yeah. I'm like, cool. amen. So nice. if I can teach my kids, number one, they get to choose everything. They also get to choose their experience of everything. If they can see that, um, yes, I love entrepreneurship and I believe it is where our potential money is. And I'm also showing, you know, and my oldest is not necessarily, she's at the Art Institute, which is amazing in San mm -hmm. Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if she'll be an, an entrepreneur. I don't know. She wasn't with me, you know, in our household full time. Yeah. Um, so whatever that influences, but hopefully she's observing. Yeah. Um, but she gets to choose. And so if you work for someone, great. And if you work for yourself, great. Mm -hmm. And you get to create your life the way you want it. And it's yeah. not, it's not a place of victim. It's a pl place of victor. Yeah. And so be the victor. Yeah. And, uh, and let's pray that's what comes across <laughs> yeah. as they grow up. Yeah. Um, but that's what I, i my, my goal is, is to teach them choice and, and, mm. you know, being responsible for their choices. Yeah. And, um, and I, and I do my best to be an example of stepping into your dreams mm. and not dreaming small. Mm. So I just keep dreaming bigger yeah. and, you know, my lifestyle now I created a couple years ago with the increase in money and with the, with my desire to live by the ocean. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and my daughter, my youngest loves the ocean too. And I, so we live at the ocean for a month every summer. Why? Because I created a freedom of location business. Mm -hmm. I've got more money in my business now and we can do that together. Yeah. Right. So every year we go to Florida and live by the ocean for a month. Um, yeah, nice. and I still work and we play and all that, mm -hmm. but she, that wouldn't, you know, years ago, that wasn't really possible. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So I want her to dream big. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. Uh, so where can, it's been great chatting with you and great. You. <laughs> thanks for sharing all of that. And where can people find you if they want to follow you online? Yeah, for sure. Bravemasters.com is the website. So everything's there. And I would love to invite people to my free Facebook group. That's really where I've been hanging out a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's bravemasters.com slash brave FB, FB for Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, brave FB on the end. Um, and you can join and it's just, I do training and, and have conversations, but I just feel like, you know, that's more of a community that I'm building of yeah. brave masters yeah. and, uh, and keeping people encouraged to, to go after their business and be yeah. strategic and all those good things, but, um, be brave in the process. So awesome. yeah, we'll have the links below as well. Yay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much for You're yeah, so welcome. doing all that. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you.